To some, the boy leads a confusing life, from the lineage of jackal, hyena, or chameleon. He ties and casts and cleans and reads the ripples in current. These things remind him of when he was not yet the boy. Others showed him, taught him, and watched as he fell and slowly rose again. Never too high or too far or too skilled, but just enough to understand what understanding might mean in the long run. The boy squints into the setting or rising sun. He knows and reads the sign of movement across the plateau of stone, body and soul both alive and dead, but replenished by the appetite of those who wait for the delightful demise. Sitting motionless for hours at times. When left alone, he is never alone. Chapters of the past and dozens of potential futures flicker like flame across the retina of chance, luck, and fate that the boy knows he will accept when required. The dust and heat no longer a menace because the boy knows they are fleeting, normal, natural, and even necessary. All of this, he knows, is fleeting. But the boy can also touch glasses and stare at objects on the wall. He can assign meaning that may or may not exist to our world or the next. He keeps secrets, plays along, and does what is expected of him. The balance and counterbalance always slightly askew. A teeter-totter of truth and deception the game of games. Are we really here, now, doing all this, and for what purpose? The boy sinks from the noise while his twin feels the pull of the strings from above, molded from wood, plastic, skin, and bone, a deliverable mechanism of intended good or not so good. As dawn unfolds, the boy walks to the edges, his bare feet warm against the stone, his back to the wind. He looks but tries more than anything to actually see appreciation. Strip bare the clutter and know the hierarchy that matters. A white rover sealed against all the boy feels on his face. Distance, the gap, knowledge, truth, and wanting to touch the edges of what could give or take it all away.